Hey guys, I am back. I had lab today and it was so much fun. Um, I didn't have a fundies lab today. I had health assessment too. So it was a head to toe assessment and I got to use my, my pink stethoscope. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Um, first we started off with the simulating lab which is an actual dummy that speaks to you, that can vomit, bleed, whatever. And it's our first experience of having, you know, a patient and dealing with the nurse because as a new nurse, you end up forgetting, you know, to assess, you know, the capillary refill or like, I don't know, blood pressure. I decided to check all the vitals except blood pressure. I don't know how that happened, but hey that's what happens when you're a new nurse and you're still trying to learn and process all the information um but today we went through the head to toe and it was a lot of inf a lot of information it was just overwhelming and but it was so much fun i have such a great professor that she really takes the time to explain everything and tell you like what you miss or like how you could make your experience with a patient better so I'm gonna tell you like what I did and I didn't know what you do in head to toe assessment. I don't know, I never saw a video on it. So I'm just gonna do one because I need a practice for my check off next week. So I'm just gonna tell you what I have to do. But basically you do aid it, which is you walk in, you introduce yourself, wash your hands, ask for um, two identifications of a patient. So the patient's name and the date of birth. And then you ask them, you know, if they're if they have any allergies or if there's anything that you should know of before you start the assessment and let them know that you're doing an assessment to start off though. <laughs> um, and then um, you're gonna go and start your assessment. So you're gonna start, I like to start from the head to the toe. I don't like to jump around. And we have to get through a lot of stuff. So I just start with the head, I start with the eyes, the ears, the nose, mouth, um, the actual head to make sure there's no like lumps or tenderness. Um, and then I go to the trachea, I go down to make sure it's not deviated, check the thyroid. And that's about it, the mouth. So I'm checking all the cranial nerves, okay? There's 12 of them and we have to know all of it, all the names. Um, the functions and I'm just gonna say it because I have to know it so I'm gonna practice so cranial nerve one which is a smell you're gonna put an alcohol swab and make sure they can have a sense of smell and as we age we lose that sense so you would want to watch out for that and then cranial nerve two is the optic nerve so basically you would have them do the Snellen chart which is what you do at the eye doctor to make sure like you can read all the lines um, and then cranial nerve three, which is the cardinal fields of gaze. Um, you would do the assessment where you place the, like a pen and you just follow, you tell them to follow. So that's three, four, and six. Um, and then you can do the accommodation where you tell the patient to look straight and you just place uh, an object in front and you should see like their eyes constrict. Um, and then there's the ocular motor, which is, well, that's three. And then there's a the trochlear, which is four, okay? And that's like the peripheral. So you see, you're not supposed to look to the side, but you're supposed to see like what's on this side, on both sides. Um, hmm, five, trigeminal. <laughs> I'm like trying not to look at my notes so I could practice. Um, trigeminal, which is a face, mastication. So you have them like go like that. Let me see what else. Then there's a sensation. So you have like a cotton ball and you tell them to close your eyes and just scrape down. See if they feel like that sensation. And then there's ab abducens, which is also the eye looking. Then there's seven, which is the facial. So you want to make sure it's symmetry. There's nothing like drooping. Um, and then there's cranial nerve 8, which is the acoustic. Um, so you would test with the Weber, which is basically an instrument where you tap and you put on the patient's head to check for lateralization. And then 
there's cranial nerve, um, well, that's eight. There's more tests for eight. There's also like the Romberg test, which is what you do when people are drunk and you're testing their balance and you have them walk heel to toe, heel to toe. Um, and then there's cranial nerve, um, where am I at? I'm on nine. Glossopharyngeal, that's nine. So that's when you check for gag reflex and you tell the patient to go, ah. Um, and then there's cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus. Same thing, gag reflex, but then there's also speech. Um, cranial nerve 11, to make sure the patient has mo like, um, lip shrug their shoulders. And then cranial nerve 12, which is the tongue. So you have them like, uh, like move it around. That's all the cranial nerve, so that's all the head. Um, and then I will go down to respirations and cardiovascular. So I'll auscultate um, the five landmarks of the heart. Um, check respirations, um, check, put my arms, like, sorry, not my, arms, my hands, in the back of the patient's chest and check for um, symmetry and also like vibrations to make sure there's no fluid in the lungs. Um, after I check, make sure the heart is regular. Um, I'll go down to the abdomen. I will percuss, which is this. I'll, I'll, first of all, you always want to auscultate first before percussing the abdomen because you don't want to disrupt the bowel movement. So you would want to hear it first before you like mess around with it and check for any lumps or any distensions, ascites. Um, and then you go down to the legs, check for mobility. And then after that, I like to do all the pulses after so I don't forget. So I start like from the top and I work my way down. And hmm, let me check just to make sure. Of course, I would do all the vital signs. I'm not going to forget blood pressure this time. Um, and then you want to check the extremities. So you would want to check um, the fingernails. You do the capillary refill, which is where you press on the finger and you let go. And you should see that the color goes back to normal within less than two seconds. Um, if it doesn't, that means there's some sort of a clot or edema, which is swelling. You do that with the toes as well. Um, besides that, um, I did the ears, um, gastro, and then that's about it. And then after that, you do a closure. You ask them if they have any questions for you. Um, then if anything, if they're staying overnight, you could say I have a call bell here for you and you thank them. And that's about it. So I had a lot of fun. It took me a long time to like get the order down and how I want to do it because as a nurse, you have to be organized and you have to be kind of quick, but you don't want to rush either because you don't want to like miss an assessment. So it was good. And so we had like our nursing kit. We have like our Foley bag, our Foley's. I don't know, we have like a whole bunch of stuff. We are playing around with um, gloves my supposed to be my sterile gloves but where it got all messed up now <laughs> um we have like a whole bunch of stuff so it's like christmas for us we're like playing around with all the stuff inside but in january I start clinicals at the hospital so i'm super excited and i can't wait to let you guys know how it's like in my experience as a new nursing student <laughs> all right bye guys peace <laughs>